io sono venuto a Malta, ho detto imparo tutte le lingue che conosco e invece poi sento parlare maltese e non capisco un H. È una lingua completamente... Eh, non avrei mai immaginato che fosse così il maltese. Anche perché studiando la storia ho visto il contatto con l'Italia costante, eccetera, e invece niente, c'è pochissimo della lingua italiana. Vi ringrazio, prego, accomodatevi. It's free seat. Uh, you can also, if you like, you can even drink at our expenses. <laughs> lui, lui. Questo mi ha eh certo, c'è sempre bisogno di qualcuno con il portafoglio. A proposito di soldi, bisogna fare qualcosa per questa città, tirano fuori un po' di soldi per la cultura, è un disastro. Le ha rubate quelle borse? Corre con le borse in mano. Allora, buonasera a tutti, ben, ben arrivati. Good evening everybody. Uh, non so ancora che lingua userò perché ieri sera per esempio mi sono messo a parlare in italiano, poi ho capito dopo un po', pochi minuti che non ridevate, eravate così piatti proprio, e allora ho detto... Eh, that's what I mean, sì. I said that I started off in Italian last night, then I lost a few jokes, and at the end, so I mean they don't understand, so I have to speak in English, so they are Australian, se any other people speak Italian, understand Italian here tonight? So far, one very timid. Look, you went like this. No, like, no, io sono no, 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 italiano, non si sa mai che mi riconoscono. E due, tre, quattro italiani, cinque. Eh, ma siete troppo pochi. Gli altri tutti, no, you are not uh, understand, you don't understand Italian? No. Yes? Spanish, ok. Uh, this is very. It's very interesting because this language, questa lingua con cui è raccontata questa storia, è una lingua incredibile che si chiama mescla ed è una lingua che era in uso in tutto il Mediterraneo fino al Settecento, fino a poco prima dell'avvento delle macchine a vapore, perché tutto il commercio internazionale, almeno del Mediterraneo e non solo, avveniva via nave, per cui i marinai venivano da tutte le zone del Mediterraneo, da Tunisi, da Grecia, da, da Corfu, da Rodi, dalla Turchia, arrivavano dai Balcani, da Venezia, da Genova, Napoli, Sicilia, dalla, dalla Catalogna, dalla, da, da tutta il, la costa spagnola, eh, da Malta naturalmente, per cui avevano inventato questa lingua franca franca, language frank, che si chiamava mescla ed è stata questa l'idea che ha avuto Dario Fo di scrivere questo spettacolo in questa lingua, però purtroppo è una lingua scomparsa, difficilissima da conoscere. I'm talking about a language in which was written this story, it was an ancient language which were used in all the Mediterranean Sea, as you probably can imagine in those days all the commercial and the trade went by on the ships so the sailors were coming from all the Mediterranean area and they developed a kind of language which was a, like a, an, a mixture of all these languages Italian, Sicilian, Neapolitan, Greek, Turkish, North Africa, Maltese uh, All, you name it, all those towns who were facing the Mediterranean Sea contributed to develop this language. And this is the language that uh, originally Dario Fo wrote this story in. Then he realized that it was a little bit difficult to, to perform, uh, so he has a little bit modified a little bit so that the Italian people could understand it. But it still has this sound. I will give you an example in a few minutes. First of all, I'd like to thank the, the, the representative of the Maltese governor, uh, government, uh, Mal del governo Maltese, no, che ci ha degnato di, della sua visita. Eh, non è una cosa da sottovalutare. Io vengo da un paese che dovrebbe essere il, ai primi posti nella cultura in Europa almeno. E invece i nostri ministri, i nostri rappresentanti politici, 
eh, la nostra politica in generale è molto distratta verso la cultura, se proprio posso dire più che distratta per usare una parola un po' forte, completamente negligente, assente ed è un peccato perché abbiamo un paese che è ricchissimo di cultura, oggi sono andato a vedere St. John's Cathedral e ho visto questo magnifico dipinto di Caravaggio, anzi due dipinti di Caravaggio e mi è venuta questa idea grazie a Giuseppe Schembri, eh, non so se voi sapete ma Dario Fo ha scritto un'opera su Caravaggio, un'opera teatrale eh, eh, con tanti dipinti perché lui stesso Dario è pittore e sarebbe bello poter fare un evento eh, con Caravaggio. <ride> You, you, tonight is your night non sono mica il ministro delle finanze eh sì oggi con, conver, uh, I was, uh, conversando, conversando con Giuseppe eh, oggi eh, siamo arrivati a capire una cosa no? che oggi ci si nasconde no? la politica prima c'era il discorso dell'ideologia no? Eh, eh, io e Giuseppe eravamo di una certa parte politica eh, eh, e Dario anche per cui eh, eravamo un po' troppo eh, di sinistra eravamo un po' troppo anticlericali per cui dovevamo essere eh, bastonati, mazzolati eccetera oggi invece la politica si nasconde de dietro la finanza cioè, la colpa è della finanza noi non abbiamo l'economia l'Europa ha detto di no allora chiudiamo tutta la Claire <ride> e chi si è visto si è visto no? Eh, in certo senso è così però la politica lei mi insegna yes. but, but, uh, oh yes I, I, I was asked to, to but I, I, I was not interested really It's too much a compromise you already found an excuse no 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 it's not an excuse no I'm, what, I, I think I think everybody No. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, but I cannot be a politician. I'm too I'm too I'm too easy going. I won't I won't be able to I won't be able to succeed. I will make such a trouble. But you can all always blame the Minister of Finance. No, 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 no. Listen, I'm a disaster. I'm a disaster. No. I cannot do this. I I like very much to perform and If I wanted to be a politician, maybe I should have started a yeah, little bit earlier. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in a way, in a way. But anyway, just to get down with the job, as the English say, talking about English, this story is, as you people know it, the other side of the coin. Cioè, l'altra versione della scoperta dell'America. The other side of the discovery of America. The one that is completely unknown. Hidden, even today. Now, if I ask you, what do you know about the discovery of America? You will probably tell me, oh, well, I know about Cristoforo Colombo. What do you know about him? Who, who else went down there? And, but very few little things. I still remember when I was a child, I used to go to school. Uh, I used to go to school. <laughs> and uh, they told me about Colombo and the three caravel, right? That's all I know. These three caravels sailing alone on the bit of the ocean, arriving there, and uh, Colombo with a picture that was on the book, uh, uh, going on his knee, making the sign of the cross, and that's it. That's all I know. But really, it's a little too, too, very much too little about it. But in the, the story, they were there, lots of stories. Simply, they were being hidden, hidden in the big library of Madrid the Biblioteca Centrale di Madrid. Hidden, lots of books. First of all, Nunez Cabeza de Maca. He was a sailor, Cowhead was his nickname. He was among the lower ranks in this expedition. And he has written a diary of a shipwreck, Diario di un Naufragio, which is amazing, the story that he tells. Another story is about a German guy, a Lansquenet a kind of a foot soldier, mercenary, who were coming down from the Baviera region down into the north of Italy with armies and destroying, killing, murdering people. They were paid by each governor or prince uh, in the locality that needed to make up some trouble in the region. And then these guys write uh, he, uh, some kind of a moment as a kind of a repentment a un risentimento, un, un rifiuto della, de, di quello che sta facendo, della guerra. 
and uh, he runs away. He runs, uh, he goes down to a port and he jumps onto a ship. You can sit down if you like, it's free for the first half an hour. <laughs> Then if you show some incitement, you, someone will come and ask you some money. Because we're very poor, very poor. Today, I, I, I was in Medina this morning, and I went to see this uh, beautiful town. And I arrived there in front of a, 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 a church, and uh, there were some cars. I take the advantage because the uh, 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 I official or representative of this government is here. I would like him to ask to do something about. No, no, it's very, it, you will appreciate this. You will thank me. There were five blue cards, top blue cards, huge, outside this cathedral. And there was all with the engine on. I stayed there 10 minutes, the engine was on. I passed by and I went. The Shiver. He, no way. There was a police there on a motorbike. I went by and I said, excuse me, policeman, don't you think it's a bit, it's a bit silly to keep the engine on while they're waiting for someone? He's probably having a speech for one hour and uh, he's polluting the whole area here. And also, we you spend money of petrol. Is it so cheap, petrol in this town? And the policeman went, we are very rich. Oh, I see, I said. <laughs> yes, he said like this, the policeman to me, we are very rich. Yes, all right. So means that rich also means ignorant. <laughs> they look at me like that. Well, can't you go and tell them? I cannot. It's their responsibility. So I stayed there another 10 minutes looking at the face. They never turned the engine off. But then I realized why. Yes. Because of their condition. Yeah, but get down to the bloody car, go on the shade. I mean, you have to keep the engine on. Five cars, Mercedes, Audi, blue cars with taxi. Uh, you know what they were, whom, whom they were waiting, waiting for? for the pres president of Italy. No, 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 I'm sorry. He was there yesterday. He was there yesterday. No, no, no. Oh, well, if they did the same, I don't know. But there, there was no the Italian flag on the car. I'm sorry. He, he, was, he was already... He was already gone. I, 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 no, no. Yes, he, Okay, whatever, whatever. The drivers weren't probably from Italy, aren't they? No, respect, respect. <laughs> I respect, with the engine on. You see, this is, this is terrible. This, uh, this situation this, and is very much like Italy. This kind of cynicism towards a situation like this is negative in the end. Because, I say again, they spend petrol, our money, citizen money, no? And they pollute the area. The whole area was polluted with this gas that was coming from the car. It's crazy. So, please, no, write a letter to the Minister of Defense. Mario Pirovano came from Italy to tell, uh, to tell this, make electric cars with electric cars. And say that we can save some money with this uh, turning off the engine. But uh, anyway, it was just something that they remind me about, yeah, about this morning. So, uh, but um, as I was saying, the story about Joan Padan is uh, very much about uh, black history, if you like. Something that was never told because, because of such a disgraceful situation as happened down there. I don't know if you are aware, but down there there's been something in those days that were really, really nasty things were going on. But we never got to know. But anyway, this story was written in 1992 by Dario Fo to celebrate the 500th anniversary of the discovery of America. You remember? 1492, 1992. And Dario wrote this story, which is exactly the other story of the discovery of America. The story starts in Venice, of course. Uh, this, this man, Joan, is, uh, is trying, he's already run away from the north of Italy because of this lansquenet, and they killed all of, the, of his family. So he goes down to work in Venice, and as a good northern chap man, he goes, he finds immediately to work. But not only that, he finds also, he, he fell in love with a woman. 
But uh, and lucky for him, he's such a beautiful woman. But, but, but really, he, and she is courted by so many people, in, and they're all trying to get her favor and so on. And they, they're even courted by other people, top guy of the Republic of Serenissima of Venice. But she, she's madly in love with Joan Padan. She doesn't want to know anybody else apart from Joan Padan. And, uh, but as you know, you know our story, things happen in, in human lives. Someone, uh, spy, spy to the Inquisition, report this woman to the Inquisition, uh, so to catch her uh, with the false accusation, like she was looking at the stars, uh, because this woman, she was also a kind of a, an astrologer, a witch, a gypsy kind of woman. And so they get arrested, and she's been taken into prison, and uh, our hero, Joan Padan, runs away, as many times happen with men in situations like this. He runs down, he goes down to the port of Venice, the lower port of Judeca. There is a brigantine, a vessel, who is trying to take off from the sea. He doesn't wait, he doesn't even ask what, where are they going. He jumps into the, in this vessel, and uh, thinking that he goes near to his house, but it's not so. The vessel, the brigantine, goes, hello, good evening. You can stop, you can sit. Oh, look, beautiful. Oh, I ate it, those empty seats. Yes. I'm glad you, you filled it in. If it's, if it's, I was being accused. <laughs> <laughs> now you can share the accusation. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and so Iran, and the vessel at, at goes all the way down to the Adriatic Sea, arrive in the North Africa in Tunisia, pass through here, goes to Tunisia, and uh, was the top of week in Tunisia, then they put water, vegetables, and they all pass again. They go through Sardinia, they go up to the Baleari Island, and they arrive in Malaga. In Malaga, they stop another week, and then after charging with food and everything, they all go all the way down to the south of Sicily. Of, of they arrive in Sevilla. In Sevilla, <laughs> he found Colombo. And he would like very much that the guy goes with him, uh, uh, to the, but he's not, very, he's not very interested because of the sea. It makes him sick, the sea, too much. But he's forced to go with him for the reason that you, you will discover uh, along with the story. Now, the technique is a very particular technique. It's a man alone describing everything that's happening. And I know that I will have your support because here, as you know, is a free street. People will pass by, but please try not to lose contact with the story. Otherwise, for me, it would be difficult all the time to go back again into the story. So the guy is hidden below deck. Is okay the language for all of you? Is that right? You're better than Italian, is it? But I give you an example of the Italian language now, of this ancient Italian language. The guy is below deck. He hears the sailors on top of the deck preparing to gain sea, preparing the ship, as we used to say. Uh, uh, to, to, and uh, it starts like this. Hey, oh, move, move, hey, give up now. Bay, vai, vai, su, tira su. I was doing it in English. I want to give you an example of the ancient language, Italian language, the mescla, as I was telling you before. Hey, vai, su, tira tutto. Vai, spiscia, vai, garomba, vai, su, con la randa grande, mola, vai, pica, giù. Spiscia, vai, vai, col paranel de contra. Oi, oh, hey, vom, you, doi, hey, tri, quattro, fondo, mola il trinchetto, vai col fiocco, yeah, mola l'orbieggio, yeah, le ancora, fuom, via, fuera, fuera, largo de aquí, fuera, via, via de Venezia, via, mare, mare abierto, salvo, son salvo, salvo, salvo de chi, salvo de cosa, salvo voi, de vescata, ciapa del Tribunal Santo de la Inquisición, per via de quella fiola, la, la stria, la strolega, boy, desgracia, 
Sono andai a contare che, che questa la strosciava i gati, la guardava il cielo per leggere le future vie, la copava le gaine, beveva il sangue delle gaine, parlava coi morti, con spiriti, il demonio, eh, il demonio, esagerà. Così qualche volta, ma per scherzo, ma era di una bellezza, guarda, sta fiola che mi ricordo ancora, un giorno c'era là giù alla marina, il Buranel, e c'era tutto piotto, un calore in tenaire, desnudo, mi piotto, la mia femmina sbiotto, imbracciato che se facevo la mano, mano, ma te lo muore, te lo tutto di un voto la me grida ferma Giovanni ma cosa te ga amata ferma Giovanni guarda guarda la luna cosa ma te ga vergognanza della luna no, no caro guarda guarda che è la luna che ha tutte quelle nuvolette intorno e cosa vuol dire vuol dire che lì adesso in un momento arriva un tremamoto che spazio ma, ma non di stronzate fiola un tremamoto ma non ti vedi che il cielo è limpio chiaro, azzurro pia, la, la laguna piatta la pare una pisada non ha fatto tempo a dire pisada che è un straluz dal cielo un fulmino un pfium, le pica giù dentro le acque comincia a arrivare le onde arrivo tu arriva Giovanni arriva il fesca fugge, c'è mo saltai su una barca, rema, via de prescia, rema, appena in tempo, arrivati sotto il portico grande de Santo Marco, e mo la sella barca lì così, e arriva un'onda grande dentro alla laguna, de Drio, sta prima onda che era un'altra onda, che le che spigneva il culo a quella davanti, le arrivai to lì alla fronda, la valsai in braccia, un brigantino, una nave, così proprio, boh, la portai de dentro alla piazza di Santo Marco, o che era la chiesa di San Marco avierta, la nave in tela navada. Non è arrivata. Vale. Cioè, già questo è un segnale per me che non posso farlo in italiano. Ci sono, è, è comico lo spettacolo, se voi non arrivano le battute non si può fare. Back into English, folks. History is like this, back and forward. Hey, move, move, hey, give a push. Bring the hand to the left now. Shake, shake. Oh, send up the jeep booms. Raise the spanker. Main sail up now and pick up the mooring. Yeah, move. Oh, 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 the anchor. Yeah. We are for, you might think that this is just invented, is it? It's exactly how the sailor of the 15th century spoke in England. I got a cassette tape. <laughs> out, out of here, out, away, away into the open sea. And we are from, away from Venice, I'm safe. Safe, safe from whom? Safe from what? Safe from being caught by the Holy Tribunal of the Inquisition. Yes, because of that which the, the woman that the, well, dumped, they tipped off to the police. They reported that she was killing cats, drinking the blood of the chicken, speaking to the devil, the evil, the, the word, the devil, exaggerated. Yeah, just, just for a joke sometime, but she was so beautiful. Oh, she was so gorgeous. I still remember, uh, I still remember when we were one day uh, off down there by the Buranel on the beach. We, it was so hot, such a hot day. Uh, we were completely naked, <laughs> totally naked. Me and my uh, girl, uh, we were making passionately love, embracing each other, kissing, and all of a sudden she goes, hey you, Joan Padang, stop a moment, look at that, look at that, what's the matter with you? Are you ashamed with, for the moon? No, no, look at the moon. Look at the moon as all those little clouds around it. What does it mean? It means that in a while here there will be a disaster. A sea quake, do you not talk crap? A sea quake. Yes, but don't you see? Don't you see that the sea, the, the sea is calm, the lagoon is flat as a big pool of peace. As soon as I said peace, when I thunderbolt struck down into the lagoon, yeah, scratching the sea all the way, was coming higher, the wind was blowing as of the, so Joan is coming, let's run away from here. Joan, we jump on the boat, row, row, quickly, Joan, row, let's go. We arrived there under the archway, under the arcade of San Marco Square, we left the boat like that, we hid in ourselves, just 
in time when a huge wave came right pushing and right behind the first wave there was another one pushing it on his arm he arrived there at the brigantine lifted up in her arm the wave all hurled it into san marco square there was the san marco the cathedral san marco wide open from the navy into the nave a priest was there blessing the faithful stop you beast go out of my church plum they found him up on the main mast floating and blessing floating and blessing floating and blessing she would divine everything everything she would divine what a shame that she did not divine when the guards of the holy tribunal came together and i Oh, what a coward I was. I they thought that she was taken into the Inquisition and put under interrogation. They thought that the governor of the Inquisitor came and tried to me and said, Hey, you, Joan Padang, weren't you with this witch woman telling, drinking blood of the chicken, killing cats, and looking inside into their entrails to divine the future? I, sir, I do not know nothing. I never saw her before. I was shitting myself with the idea that they're gonna bring me right up with the judge, the judge who pointed his finger at me. Hey, you, Joan Padau, now you tell us about everything, about this woman, but sir, I do not know anything. All right, put him on a wheel. Oh, with the idea they're gonna put me right with my hands tied on a wheel, rather than fastidious with those big iron spikes under my back, rather fastidious. And also it gives me a headache with the idea of this spike, the fire behind my hands. I ran down towards the port of Judeca. There was a little vessel, vessel just sailing away. I just shout, wait for me, please. I did not ask anything. I jump in, I hide below deck. I stay quiet and I thought to myself, oh, well, just for sure, we will go just here, close to my house. Perhaps Kyoja. Captain, where are we going? Tunisia, Africa. Oh, damn. Go all that way. There, there, is, there is no other way to go down to Tunisia, Joan Padan. On the sea, all that time, I, oh, oh God, I was born in the mountains. I, I, I'm not very familiar with the sea. I still remember the first time they threw me into the water. I was only two days old for the baptize. <laughs> ah! I still have nightmares today. There was nothing to do. We sailed all the way down to Adriatic Sea, crossed the Mediterranean, arrived in Tunisia. When I stepped down from the boat in Tunisia, I was walking all like that. <laughs> to walk properly, they have to put me back on the boat, so I walked straight properly. <laughs> And then after a week in Tunisia, we sail off again, goes backwards, north, pointing uh, the Spain. We cross near Sardinia, we went up to the Baleari Island, and then we ended out in Malaga. We stayed another week in Malaga, then we, we charged the ship with water, fresh water and vegetables, and then pointing down south, south, at the bottom of Spain, where the city of Seville, Seville, oh God. Seville, what a city. Seville, I thought that Seville was on the sea. No. <laughs> Seville wasn't on the sea. She was, Seville was there in a barrel land. A huge, you arrived there in Seville. There is a huge canal who was dig out by the moor, the Arabs, years and centuries ago before. And you arrived there, please do come. Is there some more seat there? Please sit down. We won't charge you anything. Okay, sit down. Take a seat. Be comfortable. Bring a glass of water for this gentleman, please. No, no waiters around, I'm sorry. They're very poor, fortunate. No, they, they pass by. Him. All right, good evening, senor. Please, do you have a chair? Do you have a chair? You can sit down, eh? Eh? Okay. Cosa si, cosa non si fa per avere del pubblico? Si arriva a mercificare il proprio corpo. Lo dica, la prego. <laughs> Adesso dov'ero? The Moors. Civil, civil. Civil, civil, oh, civil. What a, you arrive there with your ship, then uh, you wait for your turn, then horses, cows, 
donkey, mule, they come out from the city, and then you send down all these ropes, and then they tie all these animals with this rope, and when they give the signal that is your turn, hey, off you go, boom! These animals began to pull all these ships, they pull the ship inside the canal, they all imagine you, what, what a shame for the ship. <laughs> and we arrived there in Seville, I was stunned. I, 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 to see all this cupola painted in gold and orange and seeking blinking color, beautiful balcony with all flowers coming down, touching the street, water, water, fountain of water, sprinkling water from everywhere, an enchantment. I was really stunned. And uh, as I was stepping down from the ship, I did not realize right in front of me there were a huge pile of wood like uh, and on top of it there were four people seated with their hands tied burning in tranquility <laughs> who, who are they hereticos yes yes but who condemned them at the stake the holy tribunal of the inquisition that I ran away from Venice with the fire on my house I arrive here in Seville and I find it in front of my balls <laughs> And in Seville, they were burning people from morning to night. They were burning heretics because they didn't give up to heresy. They were burning the, the Moors because they didn't convert into Christian. They were burning the Jewish, the Jewish for any reason at all. <laughs> there was such a smelling burn of fresh that I couldn't eat meat anymore. Every time they would give me a piece of meat, I would vomit. Even the vegetables, if they were roasted, I would vomit just as well. But now, not to think that these people from uh, Seville, they were cruel. No. They were burning to save them. They were burning to save their soul. The body carbonized, but the soul apparently flying into the sky. <laughs> Just think what a soft heart they were. And in those days, there were also a big turmoil. Colombo, Christopher was in town, was preparing for his last expedition, the fourth and last expedition of his journey. And I knew him. He kept uh, coming and asking me, come with me, Joan Padan. Come with me. Of course, I am quite of a chap. I knew how to look at the stars. I knew because the woman in Venice told me about the moon, the planet. I knew when was the right time to take off with the ship, when the tide of the sea was the right one. I knew the goniometer. I knew the I knew the stethoscope, I knew, I knew how to use artificial power. I knew how to blow, I was up from Venice, I learned all the fire, it was my job, I could put some nitro, then sulfur, sulfur, sulfur put it in a cane, then a regime, So imagine you, if it was quite, uh, I said, look, uh, Columbus, I would like very much to come with you, but really, <laughs> if you find a way to go into the Indies, straight down on the street, by crossing it, without going, I come with you, even a stride a pig. Never say things like that, just to promise, you will see what will happen later into the story. In those days, it was easy to go all the way down to Africa, take a, a, a little bit of sea, then a camel, then a donkey, then a horse, then another little bit of sea, then again another horse. And it was a little bit longer. You go out younger, you arrive there, a little bit old. <laughs> so the problem was to come back, really. But anyway, I say, Joan Padan, Colombo kept insisting, if you come with me, I'll make you rich. I know that in this land there is a bucket of gold. You will come out of reach. And, well, thank you very much. Listen, Columbus, you are very kind. I like you so, you're so nice. But listen, it's not for me to go. But in those days also something happened in Spain. Something that is hidden again, even today, underneath the carpet of the history. The famous Descachada de los Judíos happened right there in those days of Columbus last trip. La Descachada, the turning out of the Jewish, they call it the English people. The, the La Descachada de los Judeos happened proprio in those days in uh, Spain. 
750,000 Judeans were thrown out of Spain from morning till night. How did it happen? Just like that. One day the Queen Elizabeth, Queen uh, Isabel of Spain, Queen Elizabeth, forgive me, uh, Queen <laughs> Isabel, but there is not much difference. Uh, queen, uh, oh, queens are queens, no? Uh, Queen Isabel of Spain had all the crown spinning around her head. She didn't have all her Thursday, as we say in Italy, tutti giovedì a posto. And she <laughs> went, uh, uh, woke up to her husband, uh, uh, Philip. This was Philip, is right. Uh, it's no mistake. It's husband <laughs> Philip. And say, uh, dear Philip, what are we going to do today? And Philip, oh, darling, I don't know really, just like that. The, and what about if we throw out the Jewish? Uh, oh, it's an idea. <laughs> <laughs> and they did it. Just like that. Out, out of here. Oh, it was a great democracy. Eh? They could go wherever they wanted to go. <laughs> to Italy, which many came. The town of Livorno in Italy was founded by the Descachado de los Judíos. It's a town, it was a village, a fish village. Now I've become a town. After all this, uh, they went to France, to Germany, to England, to Britain. But they have to go wherever they wanted to go. Eh? Morocco, I didn't know the Morocco, thank you for illuminating. Vedi com'è importante la, il teatro eh, che è tu Morocco. So, la, la, eh, they could go wherever they wanted to go, but naked. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean clothes, I mean, without bringing anything with them. They have to leave everything they own there, in the, in the, in the Spain. <laughs> All property, land, houses, money, gold, whatever they possession, they have to leave it. And the queen and the king collect. It was a good trick. Eh? But as you probably know, the Jews are not the last on the planet. In those days in Spain, they were the Italian bankers. Italian bankers. Uh, uh, they were having such a luck, those bankers, such a suerte. They were the Genoese, then the Venetian, then the Florentine, and the big head, snotty one of the Milanese banker. Though, well, I knew all this trick and machinery because I used to work in a Genoese bank. And I knew what the Jews would do. We'd go to the bank, act out, pretend they were having a debt, leave all their possession to the banker. The banker underneath the counter, from this moment comes the word under the counter. They release a letter of credit, which I also wrote. Uh, and the Jews take the letter of credit and walk into France, into Germany, into Italy, entering the same correspondent bank of, uh, of, uh, that was in Spain and give out. Uh, it was a good trick. Eh? But the queen got suspicious. <laughs> but these Jews are all full of debt. <laughs> They began to question some of the Jewish. Those who were very collaborative, they talk about fire. The Jews became talkative immediately. Then walk up to some of the judges, and also the judges, as soon as they hear the word fire, they talk immediately. And one of the judges of the tribunal of the Inquisition got hold of one of these letters of credit, and he says, oh, what a lovely letter of credit. How well it's written, look how, what a, what a lovely writing. I would like to know who is this guy who wrote this letter. And you guess what? It was the one that I wrote. <laughs> and I, waiting for them to find me, with the fire getting closer to my ass, I ran down towards the port of Seville. There was the fourth and last expedition of Cristoforo Colombo. I just shouted, stop! Wait for me! I'm coming, Colombo! Stop! Wait for me! I, the, the, the ship was already off the pier that much. Stop! Wait for me! I walked on the water. <laughs> Jump in, I below and say, Captain, please, well, well, I, can, I can shoot the cannon. I can, I geographical, I can write with such a arm fine. I can look at the moon and the stars. I can, uh, I'm sorry, Joan, but I'm, all these jobs I've taken. If you really want to work with us, well, you might just go below deck and look after the pigs, the cows, and the horses that we are taking with us. I did not know. I did not know, but these people were taking all these animals because in this newfound land, they weren't horses like the one we had, pigs or cows. The only thing was the trouble that these animals, they were not used to the sea. 
Every time a huge wave will crash against the ship, <laughs> another wave, <laughs> they were shitting from morning till night. And there I understood for the first time the famous French saying, when the French wants to wish you good luck, what do they say? Man! I was in a luck like here. <laughs> Plenty of it. And then we sailed all the way. And one day uh, there was a huge turmoil of the sea. The waves were crashing all over the place. The ship was wrecking all over. And the, and the cows below, they were hoofing the pigs in their, in, in their faces. And the pigs were biting the dog, the, the, the dogs, the horses. The horses were hoofing the pigs, the pigs in the middle. Stop it! <laughs> Enough! And then the cow, hey, you. All the animals, well, hey, you are good putting stitches in the sail. Well, take this needle and sew this animal. So I saw every, all the animals. I saw the pigs, I saw the cow. I put stitches into horses. I did such a confusion. I put a, a, a horse's leg with a, horse's, uh, with a cow legs. <laughs> such a mistake. But uh, they were safe. I was safe. They kept me warm in the night. And they, and they went. I don't know for how long, days and days, there were only sea and sky, sky and sea. And then finally we ended out in a little under, Mara, tierra, terra, terra. Oh my goodness, I never seen anything like that. You should see that land. It was flat, the sea, with trees coming out, like us to embrace us. They were full of fruits of any kind as, as they were just asking, take me. To, to, and then and you could see the sea, of the bottom of the sea with the fish swimming. I never see such a transparency, such a clear water in my life. And then the Indians came. The Indians, they came all with their pieces of wood called canoe. And they were paddling with these sticks. They were going fast, uh, singing, and the old cherry moon singing to us, uh, and all naked. <laughs> totally naked. The men with their bindle, willy, willy, wall flatting. The women with their flat, plea, plea. They did the Lord, Lord, oh God, what a wind. Oh, and then, hey, they were full of, hey, Spaniard, would you like some pearl? There were some of these Indians flowing down, diving down into the sea and coming up with some coral in their mouth. They said, hey, Spaniard, would you like some pearl? Yes, please. <laughs> Catch. Oh, thank you. But so gentle they were, so generous. Oh, what? <laughs> now, ju just to say, for example, uh, the, I mean, to, to, to sleep, I put you on, on the ground with fleas? No. Do they uh, ever? No, on big leaves. They are these huge leaves they call, they call love leaves. Oh, 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 one double size, then a small size, a uh, single size, and then you slip down there on these leaves. Oh, what the? And the generous they were, these women. If you like one of these girls, one of these women, the one that's needed all the things that we do, to write a little note, wink her with her eyes. But you know, no. It was enough that you look at her and she will lower her eyes, flush red in their cheeks, and then she will take her by the hands and walk inside into the forest. <laughs> And all, the, and all the birds, the monkeys, the monkeys were jumping from one tree to another tree. Come on! I swear it, they were saying, come on. Come on, <laughs> come on! Oh, the world, the world. They would take their bread out of their mouth to give it to us. And we, Christian, Catholic, good people, first willing and dealing, then cursing and feeding. Then become to snatch pearls from their jewels, even from their rings. Then catching some of these women and bringing inside into the forest and violate even the kids, even the little one. And then above all, taking away people, taking away to carrying people so much so that one day uh, the chief of these Indians, about 400 of them, came out from the woods, from the forest, armed with spears. Hey, stop you, dumb! What's the matter with you? Hey, what, what, what's happened? The captain said, all stupefied. What, 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 enough of taking away people. 
Nobody ever came back. It's already the fourth trip you made down here. And nobody ever came back. But we are taking them just to introduce her to our good down, uh, well, king, uh, queen, uh, who she's so lovely, good as prayer. I don't care. Now you send down all this out of our brothers. Otherwise, we threw spare and arrows. And he didn't even finish the word spare and arrows. When from the boat of the ship, from the board of the ship, a huge cannon, a colubrine, a spin guard that came out. Boom, pop, pop, pio, go, two, boom, four, five of these slaughtered to death. From another side of the ship, another bomber, pio, pa, oh, my God, see, ball. Oh, good. And from a huge hole of the ship, came out a horse, a horse, a man on a horse. They never saw a horse before. They thought he was a monster, that the legs of the soldier were coming out from the belly of the horse, and they were shouting, a monster. They came out with spear and pikes, and they began, Fwah! yeah, elderly women, pregnant women, elderly children, baby, too. A massacre. There was a priest there who said, oh, come on, Juan Padan, don't be so, so disturbed. What are they killing? Our people, these, look at them, look. Uh, look at them, look, they're all naked. They don't talk, they don't have, a, a, don't, they, they don't know anything. They don't have relation. They, they don't have religion. They don't have a soul. It's like to kill a dog. Don't be so negative. I was a negative, I just did not like it. I didn't like, I couldn't wait to leave this place. And luckily they gave the order, we depart! I was so pleased. I loaded up the ship with everything I could find. Vegetables, fruit, water, loaded up, down story, and also pigs. We loaded up with five, six big pigs all the way down. And then finally, we, they also take nearly 200 of these Indians, tied up with their hands and with a rope around their neck and stuff at their throat with cotton so they could not scream down below deck and off we went. The only things that were little to drink, little to eat, these Indians every day, one or two of them were dying and the sailors threw them off board. So much so that after one week behind the ship there was a huge line of fish. They were waiting for the Indians to eat. The fish favor the Indians dead, the dead Indians. <laughs> and some of the sailors say, hey, why don't we fish with these Indians? They brought the dead Indian, they chop it up into pieces, then hook it up and throw it down and fish. And they caught, they got fishes. Only that uh, every now and again our God, Father, the Eternal, comes out from the wind, from the clouds and sends out a huge storm down into the sea that the ship began to slope brown. Then blew the blue right tight street and the huge lightning struck down on the main mast. Pium! Crack it, fork into four pieces. Oh, a ship rolled. The name is on a boom, a huge wave came right into the ship, uh, bring the air, was ripped off. Oh, now I'm governable. The ship is not possible to govern. Everybody down onto the sea, lower the lifeboat, lower the lifeboat. Oh, sir, what? Uh, the, the Indians, I went down where the door was, it was locked, I tried to pull it out. They were already behind the door, they pushed it down, they pushed it, they really, they came upon me, they clasped, walk on me, literally. Oh, luckily a friend of mine just rescued me, rescued me and said, come on, Joan Padan, we need to jump now. Let's jump onto the sea, we're gonna die drawing. Let's jump onto the sea with the corner of my eye. I looked down below deck and I saw the pigs. Wait, do not, no, wait. First of all, let's get the pigs. What, the pigs? What do you care about the pigs now? Get the pigs. Now, not to think that I became passionately mad in love for a Christian pig. Oh, I love passion, Christian passion for the pigs. No, is that I knew. I knew that a pig has an incredible prerogative. A pig is a kind of ball of meat. 
you can throw him into the sea and he will float, float ever. And above all, the pigs as a compass in the nose. If you put him even in the darkest of the night, he will immediately point the nearest coast. When he goes full time, <laughs> down, there is the coast. <laughs> Never mistake. And above all, the pigs are destructive. He swims. He swims. And this little curly tail that is made that way, so you can catch all the way. And he rope, you know, he pig, and up, track it, he pig. Rap, track, track it, he pig. Give him me a smile, darling. Rap, track it, he pig. Hey, right, then get the pig. Get the pig. Come on, Sue. Uh, <laughs> well, I have to drink a glass of water. <laughs> I knew something was wrong. So, uh, what do you think about? How do you feel? Does it make sense, the story? You understand nearly all the words that they say? Va bene. Ah. So, get the pigs. So take the first pigs. Here you are, now tie it around you. All right, another one, Ten. you two, take it. Then three, immediately, stop. Oh, don't move. Ready now, let's jump onto the sea. Come on, oh, oh, yeah, oh. A big wave come now, whoa. Oh. Alive. Thank you, little hog. Here a kiss. Hey, another wave. Oh, boah. Wow. Here, another kiss for you. Only f he started to like it. <laughs> they will go under even the wave, without the wave, just for the kiss. <laughs> but they managed to save us. They drove us ashore. We arrived there. We were in such a state, completely naked. Me and my friend, we were four of us, and uh, all kind of color like cyclamine, uh, bluette like. Uh, the pigs were pink, yellow, something strange color, violet color. Uh, we were four of us. There was one with the red hair, we call it red hair. And the other one was dark, we call it dark, blackhead. Another one was lanky, and we call it lanky. Another one was huge, uh, f like we call it 30 trap. In fact, he was the one who saved his pig. The pig was saved by him. Salve. Buonasera. Difficile camminare su questa strada con questi tatti. È roba da spaccarsi le caviglie. Uh, yes, four of us. <laughs> and now what are we going to do? Thank you. Now what are we going to do? Uh, we didn't die in the sea. We didn't draw into the sea, but we're going to die of cold, of frozen cold. When I look above the hills of the dune of the sand, I saw a group of people coming down, running, running towards us. Um, they were Indians, of course. With spears and arrows, they will come. Oh God, I said to myself, I said to my companions, if these people have already met the Christians, we are fucked. <laughs> so uh, they arrived toward us uh, and they, they were kind of, well, Nita, Kainito, Neya, Paito, Nepe, Si, no, Te, Bom. And with the language that I just learned on the ship, I said, Inoi, Catesa, Napoti, Esa, Na, Espanola. I can't see you now, frag. He's a good officer. They understood anything. Everybody said, well, I can't see you no Christianos. What? <laughs> oh, we were safe. They didn't know the word Christianos. And I said, please, can you give us something to cover ourselves? We are freezing to death. And they, well, what are we going to give you? We are more naked than you are. <laughs> But just imagine the intelligence of these people. Because the village was quite away, so what they did, there were so many of them, they, every 10, 20 meters, they would make a little fire, then bring up, collect it, and then give us a little warm. Another 20 meters, and then a little warm. And they did the same with the pigs. The pigs did not like that. 
But they didn't know, they'd never met the pigs before. They thought the pigs were another race of Christians. <laughs> A little bit fattened up. Oh, and then they brought us into their village. Oh, wow, what a village. Very well built with a palisade all stick down to it. And then inside there were huge hat and small hat. And they brought us into a very nice hat. And each one of these people have an amok inside. You know the amok, no? Uh, inside the, uh, with a little sender, with a little fire underneath, a little sender here underneath to warm your back. And uh, the difficult thing was to mount on the, on the amok. Because someone who doesn't know, it goes by us. <laughs> Great mistake, because as soon as you go pull, go pull your ass down, then you lift up the legs, stretch out your arm, the arm of vascular, boom, eh, boom, flat down your ass on the ground. <laughs> but it's not fat. You, you need to go with your knee. You push, pull your knee first, then you stretch out your arm, then you stretch out with another arm, lift up the other legs, and the amok again, bambarash, eh, patapom, another big flat down to the ground, because it's not a matter of knee, it's a matter of violence, dynamic. You need, you go by your knee first, but first you need to take a breath. So you pull your knee, take a breath, the balance, the ammo comes to you, release the breath, the ammo goes out, stretch out the arm. Then you go, all is about, is about a movement. You need to make a movement. Breathing and movement is all, that's all it's about, folks. Life is all about a great movement. Hey, oh, wow, what's you? Hey, oh, oh, boom! I fell right with my ass into the pressure. Ah! Plum! With a jump, I was right back up into the amok. The force of dynamic. <laughs> One night I was asleep, trying to get some sleep, and all of a sudden I felt some warm around me. And I opened my eyes. Oh, oh piacere. Oh, girl, a female. One of these women came right into the oven to keep me warm for the night. Imagine you with the tenderness. And I looked to my friend, each one of them, they all have a girl embracing them. Just to imagine, it's already difficult to stay on my own into the mamok. Imagine two of us. <laughs> Besides, I wanted to give some kisses, some cuddling, some caressing, but it was difficult to move. Oh, she was gorgeous. She really helped me out a lot. She was giving me, uh, Joan Padam, please, calm down. Don't be in a hurry. You don't need to be in a hurry. Listen, listen, slow, gently. When I lift up my back, you go under it with your arm, your back, and then you move. It. Yes, don't remember to breathe. I was breathing like a mask. <sighs> slow down now, Joan. Yes, no, now, too soon. Wait a minute. No, all the second. No, Joan, no, now. Wait, no. Oh, I fell. Right, my head first to the ground, but I did not touch the ground. My balls were trapped in the net. <laughs> and the woman. I'm as stubborn as a mule. Even when my friends were going for a siesta, I would enter into my in my tent, my cabana, and I will go on to the hammock. I will do all the exercise I was able to do. I will go standing straight onto the rope. Then I drew a dip. I did a scissor style. Then I went right back on the back, on the house. I became such an amateur that even when I was making love with this woman, I will touch myself with everything, with my finger, with my toe, with my buttocks, with my ears, with my, with everything. When the crazy freak of folly will arise to my mom. Yeah! Wow! A deadly triple somersault. God, you should make an applause here, man. Eh? <laughs> Bloody hell. That's what I say to you. I tell you, the worst thing is people who come without paying for a theater. Because it's cheap. If you pay, 
you, you must enjoy yourself. You must applaud. I'm totally negative about free, free, free entrance. Absolutely. They don't, you see, look, I was damning myself. Damning myself. They didn't even, even the Chinese laughed at this joke. The Chinese in Hong Kong, they laughed in this, in Melbourne. They, they, but they pay in Hong Kong. They pay in uh, Melbourne. Again. Well, it's just a joke, but it, it means something, eh? Now, where I was, yes, the Commedia dell'Arte Capitan, the bull, the spravento, the sparavento comes out. Eh? Uh, oh, oh, the only things that I did not like about these people is the way they were treating their animals. For example, they have the animals that we never heard, never saw before. They have this kind of ding dong, they call it. Uh, takin, turkey. Uh, this ding dong, takin, turkey is a uh, Ugly as very few beasts in the world. He's got eyes like a cataract right here. He's got feet with such a nail that if he grabs you, he rips you off one arm entirely. The only nice thing that he has is a feather. The one, for example, is happy to be alive and he goes around it, spread out all his brow like a, like a ventaglio, as to say, hey, look at what a lovely feather coming out from my ass. But in that right moment, the Indians catch him and pull all the feather out. He doesn't like it. <laughs> but why? Why you do these things? Well, you don't understand. We prepare the meat. The meat. Yes. You can't kill this beast just ripping off the feather like that when it's dead. And when you boil it, it's like a computer. It doesn't even go. You need to pull a stick to make it go down. But if you do this before and uh, you pull it out, all the blood underneath is virgulatuto. It's like making a massage the when you're going to cook this meat. It's like butter. It goes, yeah, they have a religion about food, these people, that we cannot imagine. For example, a gran seola, a huge crostaceo, non so come si chiama in inglese, la gran seola, con, con tante chele, una specie di gambero gigante. Eh? Sì, tipo una, una lamboster, sì, una cosa così. Lobster, sì. We, what we do? We put it on the water, we boil it and that's it. No. They put it underneath the earth, they put grass over, they put leaves, they put scents, they put perfume, flour, they put, they roast it, they roast it, they roast it, they let it go slowly, slowly for half a day. When you bring it out, you eat it like caramel. It's uh, delicious that you can't imagine. We are gross. We just make a, a, a steak, we put it on the fire, and like that, but no, we have no knowledge at all. But they have a shine for food. Oh, one day, I remember, they arrived from another group of people from another region. Perhaps they were coming from, an, uh, I don't know, but they, they were, I never see anything, anybody like that before in my life. The men, I'm not joking, they were that tall. Their battle, they arrived on my shoulder. I never see a race of people of that kind. The women that they have with them, long black hair, all the way down to their ankle. They arrive here. They have teeth that were going up into the sky. I blew the buttock. It wasn't a buttock. It was a balcony. <laughs> you could put a vase full of water. They will walk out. They wouldn't even drop a drop a drip or drip a drop. They wouldn't drip a drop or drop a drip, whatever you like it. They were walking like queen, they were. All the bees, they make a feast, they drink beer, scratch it with maize, they get drunk, they sing in the middle of the party. Some of these jump on us, literally crash on our head, they knock us out, they tied our hand, they tied our legs, and off they go. They brought us down into their canoe. They sold to us. I came to know later on that I was giving for free. Pay for three, one is for free. <laughs> the only consolation was these girls who used to stay with us at night time, and there were tears on their cheeks, but they were, there was nothing they could do. They crushed down us on this canoe and off they went all night, all day long. We couldn't even see where we were going. And they were going fast and fast and another day and another day. It was an endless trip. Then finally, we ended out 
on a huge, on a huge land. It was, it was full of flower everywhere. There were huge trees, flowers. They were everywhere, full of flowers. So flourish. It was, it was Florida. It, it was the Florida. They call it the Florida, the earthly paradise. It was for them, but for us, it was hell. We have to work in milk into the water to catch fish and crab and then cut wood and make fasten and store them and fumigate the fish and everything and then at night time inside our hut with a rope around our neck oh oh yes that was very very sad moment that one and i saw my friend that kept saying to them be careful don't be like that don't be like that. They were sobbing, crying. They were so sad. Don't be like that. Be careful. Be careful that these new bosses of us are quite strange. These people, they like us slave, but they want slave happy. Happy slaves. And so I was, every time I used to meet these people, I would say, ha, 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 I like to work as a slave. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, Oh, it be tired, he was going to free me. I kill him. <laughs> and in fact, one day, one day, I realized, it, and I noticed, I always play attention at the moon. That night was the moon, just like that time in Venice. And when the chief of this Indian came, the magician, with a big hat, with a horn. The chief magician came into my hat, and, and uh, <coughs> he just went like that. And then some women came in, and they, about 20 of them, they, they wake me up completely. They put me out of the, of the hood. They took me where a huge cascade of water was coming down. They put me upon a tree trunk and they, they began to, to clean me, to wash me everywhere. They, they, they did things to me that I can not really tell you. Then, and then, then some of them began to put my hair under my armpit and from my chest and then from under below the belly, which hurt so much. Oh, what's the matter with you? Have you taken me from a, for a turkey? Yes. What? Do you want to eat me? Yes. Oh, I nearly fainted. They were cannibals. They were going to eat me. Oh. I said to the magician, excuse me, but why me? Why me? Why me? I said to the magician, why well, couldn't you choose the 30 tribes? Look, you can eat it for a whole week with all of the tribe with him. Why me? I'm so skinny and lanky. Because you are you're likable. What do you mean? Well, you are a laughing boy, laughing man, you know, meat of someone who is laughing and read and channel like you is a lovely meat. It goes down so well. You digest it well and you have lovely dreams. On the contrary, the meat of those companions, sulky companion of yours, is a rotten meat. It's a sober, he wouldn't go down even with a stick pushed down your throat. Oh, that's nice. I didn't know about this business of the likable meat. And then they took me back into my heart, all tied up, and I just was waiting. I could have imagined in front of me that I would be pointed with a knife right here like a pig and nailed down with the blood flowing, oozing down. Oh, I can't, no. I'm not going to end up like this with my teeth. I tried to hold the rope. I, I knew that it was madness to go out into the forest in the dark. And I don't care. Better in, eaten by a wild beast than eaten by this people. And I managed to free myself. I got out of the hood. No. Wow, nobody, nobody, look how secure they feel these people. I reach where the palisade wall, I put out one leg, I'm nearly out this the second leg when I saw some shadow in the forest. There were other people, other Indians were trying, they were trying to come and attack these people while they were sleeping. I could not stand it for it. How oh, do I care? They want to eat me. I couldn't, I couldn't. Wake up, you dumb fool! They're coming to get you! Wake up! Wake up! They're coming to get you! I, don't, I pick up a pole myself and I began to crash on their heads. And like that. Luckily, they all came out with spare and arrow. Boom, pum, pum, pum. One, one, two, three, four of these fell down earth and the other flee away into the wood. And also, on this, 
side of the camp, there were other people, even the, the guy, the guy with the so simpatico, he was the magician with the big horn, the one that wanted to eat me because it was likable. He had received a knife right here in the belly. He had all his guts outside. Oh, poor things. I must do something about it. I remember I had the needle and the, the needle and the, and the cotton that I used to sew. I went in, back into my hat. I got hold of the piece of iron and the hat. I hot it up on the fire, a piece of iron. Then I woke up to him. The Indians were threatening me. He understood right away. Raised his arm and said, let him do it. So I, I put it down. I prepared his stomach. I tried to go, God, oh, look how much there is. Too much. Too much. Oh, this is not good. This is rotten. <laughs> God, well, I, I put everything inside. I tried to cover it. And then I did it like I used to see my mother when she made pasta. I placed it down like this. Which to, 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 to it, and put the iron, hot it up again, and cauterized the wound. <laughs> A smell of fresh of flesh like I was back in Seville. Then I took the needle and the cotton and I made a little knot and I began to pull one string, one, two, three, one. Fiocco, uno, due, tre, like that, piano, yeah, sa, lo, un, due, three, quattro. And at the end, I made a lovely little knot. <laughs> they, they lift him up, they brought me where another wound was. And then again, pshum, 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 counted out, say, two, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, four, la, si, three, a lovely little knot, you two. Then another one, well, okay, my God, pshum, one, two, three, so, two, two, three, five, one, two, one, see, a, a little knot, without the knot, all right, it was one. <laughs> then another one, so, <laughs> I brought, they brought me to sleep, and I was sleeping and sewing, sleeping and sewing. I don't know how long I slept. I was waken up by the magician. They came in into the hut. Oh, bravo! Giovan Patan, welcome, meraviglia. Okay, bravo, get to say. Welcome, meraviglia. How good you were. You saw everybody. You saved the life. Even the magician, look, he walks a little bit bending on the side. But he's alive. You've done a well job. What a stitcher you are. You are fantastic, Giovan So you're not going to eat me anymore. Eating you? Are you kidding? We're going to keep you here as a watchdog for all your life. <laughs> Such an alarm giver you are, Joan Padan. And my companions too. You are not going to eat them too. No, no. We are going to eat them. <laughs> look, look, they're still asleep. If it wasn't for them, we would have been all slaughtered to death. We don't care even if the rotten meat, we won't digest it, but we'll go to eat them just as well. First thing in the morning. I walk out of the hut, I went down towards the shore, and the sea and there there was again the moon. Like just that time in Venice with my witch, with my lover. Oh darling, darling, I love you so dearly. Where are you now? And I look at the moon, it was all those little clouds around. <laughs> like that time in Venice. <laughs> and as I was speaking to the moon, the chief of the Indians come. Paul said, hey, what's the matter? Joan Padang, what are you doing? Are you talking to the moon? Of course. Always. And she, the moon, answers you back? Of course she does. <laughs> she is my mother. <laughs> hey, you, Joan Padang. <laughs> you are quite such a good alarm giver, such a teacher. You are there, but now you're going to tell us that you speak to the moon. And the moon, she answers you back. Hey, you, Joan Padang. Fair enough, we do are savages, but we are not dummies, eh? <laughs> oh, yes? Oh, you think so? Yeah, like, well, you see, look at the moon. Now you will see what will happen here. In a few days, in a few, in a few moments, the sea, a sea quake will pass a via tutto. The sea will raise up, the trees will cut all the hearts. If, if you don't carry all your people up to that cave, up on the hill, and take Shelter yourself, you will see what's going to happen. Do not talk crap, Johan Padan. Don't you see? Look at the sky, it's Asia, calm, azure. Look at the sea, it's flat, there's a big pool of peace. <laughs> Magic word, peace. As soon as I said peace, 
a huge thunderbolt struck down into the sea. Pfiom! The waves were coming higher and higher all the time. And the Indians understood right away. They already came out of their huts. They had baskets on their heads. The sea quake! A hurricane! The hurricane! Let's flee this area! The hurricane! Quickly! Quickly! All of you! Go have that cave! Get into the shelter, take shelter yourself, quickly, quickly, women, children, elderly, everybody went inside, and me too, with all the others arrived just in time. As soon as this huge wave came inside the, uh, the village, when the wave went right back onto the sea, there was nothing left. No one had to stay. And this went on all day and all night. Whoa! Blue and weird, and all the women were crying, the end of the world! It's the end of the world! Crying and shouting another day, blah, blah, blah. And then another day again, blah, blah. And then, as uh, just is happening at the puppet theater, when the backdrop with the lightning and the tempest is lowered down, and the one with the sun rising is lowered up just the same. A sun ray entered into the cave, and we realize that everything is over. Everything was finished. And we slowly remove all the crushed things that blocked the cave. Trees, damp, rocks, everything was there to stop, protect us as well. And we came out one by one, one behind each other with our eyes in the despair. And we look and we look and we look everywhere. There was nothing else than mud. Mud and sea and water, mud and sea and water, wherever our eyes could arrive. And I saw, I looked behind, and I saw all the angels were right behind me, all on their knees. They were all, even, I think I saw even the pigs on their knees. And some of them were saying, Santo, 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 you are a saint, Saint John. Nearly, I got carried away, I nearly shouted, Alleluia, Alleluia. <laughs> I stopped it just in time. <clears throat> and the chief of the angels comes up to me, Johan Padan. Johan Padan, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go? Look, we knew, knew, we, where are we going to go? Tell us. It's all destroyed, there is nothing else to do for us. What are we going to do? Tell us, where are we going? Okay, okay, calm down. I'm going to, now we decide where to go. Calm down. I, we, I say, we have to go west. West? How can you say this so easily? Well, I'm a saint, I'm a, should I know a little, one or two things, don't I? But I knew very well that I used to see ships coming from that way, always going down west because I wanted to go down west because I knew that down west there was the town of Cachoque, a Spanish town, and I wanted to get there, arrive in this Spanish town, jump on a ship and go back to my country that I couldn't stay here anymore. First ran away from Venice with a knife on my leg, then jump into the sea that road, and then nearly gazette, and then the painted the boats, and, and then pasta, and then the hurricane. Enough! I want to go home! Enough! I want to go home! Enough! I want to go home! You might think that it's finished. I want to go home, but it's not finished. Unfortunately for me. Usually, I stop here 10 minutes to change my clothes and to get washed a little bit, but I cannot. I cannot because it's a difficult situation. I have to go straight through. Are you with me? All right. Okay? Uh, and so they start off walking through this mat, walking through the mat with all the food that they have and walk and walk and walk and as the day were passing by the mud was still there and the trees that were still collapsing down miles and miles destroyed and the, and the food and the food was scarce and food soon the food finished and then the kids started crying the elderly people couldn't walk anymore and they have to be left behind and one day one of the chief of them came up to us and said Joan, what are, where are we going to go? Here, we are not making anywhere. 
listen, what are we going to do here? We're gonna, we, we, we've got nothing to eat anymore. We, we are going to die. With the, be confident, please. Try to trust me. We will soon find something, I'm sure. We'll find something. Let's go. We'll, we'll walk again. we we'll walk again. we we'll walk again. But, and then one day he stops in front of me. Hey, you, Joan, tomorrow morning we eat. What are we going to eat? We're going to eat those prisoners that we catch a few days ago. And no, again. Again, with the story of eating human beings, is a, is a bad thing to do. It's a, a very incredible stuff. You cannot do this. It's not possible. You are savages. You are... Oh, yes, you are the good one, yes? You and where you're coming from, you kill each other eh, every day, and then you leave all the dead body down into the earth to rotten, to waste all that food. <laughs> Wasting you are. That's what you are. Who told you this? A Spanish Christian we ate last year. I don't care. We don't go to eat anybody. I, otherwise, I tell my mother the moment that she get really hungry. Oh, what a break of both this moment. Come on, we'll find something. Let's go. And so we walk again. We walk down. We walk again. We walk down. And finally, we arrive out into a big land square. And we saw up on down on the hill some smoke coming out. Who's there? Oh, the Kachuba! Are the Kachuba! The Indians are like us. Look, the Kachuba, they're coming. Oh, they, they, they. And so immediately this, they made a, a fire. Then they took big leaves, they wetted them, and then they put it upon, and then they stretched. I didn't know. Big clouds that were going. I didn't know what they were doing. Then other clouds were coming from the other side. I say, what? And then the next day, I understood. When this Kachuba arrived, they have food. They, have all the, they told us that we were starving. And they, they told us, hey, you, bring good food with us. Be careful that with us there is a guy whose name is son of Joan Padang, son of the moon, son of the sun, his mother of the moon. She gets, she really, see, she's upset. Full stop. Uh, I didn't say this line very well. I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, but it's a nice joke. Never mind. I hope next year to do it better. Uh, so, uh, 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 so they arrived there and, the, and the, all the food down there. When a couple of these people came out from the crowd and stepped forward, looking right in front of me, they were really strange looking, very ugly looking. They were all shaved off their hair. They have yellow painting on their faces, all red here in the stomach, black legs, and up in the end, half naked. One of them comes straight towards me look at me right into the eyes, then look down at my feet and choo, choo, spit on my feet. <laughs> hey, you, what's the matter with you? I'm good savage. Uh, we know you very well. We don't have any subjection of you. We know that you are coming from. We know who you are. That last year, a couple of people like you came right into our village and killed everybody. And they have Boston stick who spat out fire and killed everybody. Women, elderly children, pregnant women and men, elderly too. Everybody, they did a massacre. We, you look too much, very much like them. We don't have any. We are not afraid of you at all. And if we found you alone into the forest, we're going to eat you raw. And off they went. Then later on, this friend of mine explained to me that this group of Indians were another kind of Indians who were called Incas. Incas, which in Italian is like the Estremaciun Curta, the Incasadi, <laughs> which means uh, enojado in Spanish and uh, uh, annoyed, people who are annoyed. In Italian, the jokes is fantastic, but in English, I didn't. I, I did research some Indian tribe who had the possibility to match this joke, but I didn't find an Indian tribe. So I have to keep Incas, also because it's a very famous group of Indian Incas, no? Incas, Incasadi. Come si dice Incasadi in inglese? Eh? Pissed off. Eh, eccolo qua. Yes, Incas in Italian means pissed off. Okay, you just. Remember this. Pissed off. Non mi, non mi veniva questa parola. Grazie. So, uh, and off they went. So, I look, uh, oh, everybody, all these Indians were, became pale. 
they didn't want to come with me anymore. After what they heard about those Indians telling about these other group of Spanish people, and I said, come on now. Just because you heard this, don't worry. When we go to the governor, I will tell them, and he will give a right punishment to these people who say, but they did not want to follow me up again. They stood there in mer with their face emerging to their knees, and I began to push and Come on, now we arrive up to here. I'm sure we are nearly there. Come on, push. And finally, I managed to convince them, and off we went down again. We take the road again, and we start walking. And as the time, the time was passing, the Indians were coming. There were more. Other group of Indians knew where we were going, they came with us, knew that I was called by this group of people, son of the moon, son of the rising sun, I was called. They were coming with us and, and as we were walking, and then one day, I was a little bit behind from the main group. Down below, I heard shouting, screaming, a monster, a monster, a monster. What the hell is that monster then? I walked straight down, ran down to us, and <laughs> the monster, a little cavachito, a little horse, a little stallion, a little young colt. He was there. He was born free in the forest, and you couldn't go any. Yeah, <laughs> if they, all the Indians were right up on the on the trees. Hey, you, you got a good courage, eh? Come on, I'll show you how to tame these, these monsters. So I pick up a stick, a cane, and I'll, hey, you, stand back, you, yeah, yeah. Ha, 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 look at it, the monster is afraid of me. What is a horse after all? It's a donkey who thinks a lot of himself. <laughs> uh, the, when the red hair, jump onto the back of the cold, the young stallion arches his back, boom, he spat poor red guy against a tree, flat down onto the ground with his ass, all the Indians, ha, 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 the red hair flattened his ass on the ground. Oh, it is easy to lose your respect that you took years to get uh, the day, the terrible things when the day after, when the father of the young colt came, the big stallion, oh, a monster, a lion, black, who was spitting fire out of the nostril. It was impossible to go anywhere near. So I left to thought about, we thought about making a team a terrible way. The breaking of the Bergamo people how they tame the horses, the Bergamo people. First of all, you have to make a rope all around, three by three, three by three, or then another one up here, so he cannot jump out. Another thing is difficult is to put a halter on it. You know, you can't talk to the horse, excuse me, may I? It's gonna bite, you know? So what do you do? You speak to another man. What a nice day today, isn't it? Yes, it's nice. Yes, it is nice. Uh, all right, so what do you do? You put down the altar onto the ground. You attach a cane to the altar. A man hidden behind the bush, right here waiting. And then onto the other side, you tie another cane on this side, and ah, uh, another man hidden right here behind the bush. You know what the horse is like, do you? The horse is curious. He comes, he sees, oh, what is that? A halter, never seen before. He goes down, he lowers his head, he goes very lower to his head, attached to the nostril. When he's right there so much with his nostril, the two eat the man gently together. Yeah, plop, tira, encabezado, halted up. The other difficult thing is to attach a rope here, here to drive him around. It's not as you can talk to a man, say, he's going to bite you. So what do you do? You think. You pretend to talk to someone. Nice day today, is it? Yes, it's going to be a very nice day. I think it's going to rain. All right, let's see. Let's see what's going to happen. The horse is curious, he's coming to with this. What do you say? And you, in tanto, you attach the little ropes on this side. Then you go on to the other side, and you do just the same, but beware, you have to exchange men. Otherwise, the horses is suspicious. <laughs> How is it today? Oh, it's going to be a sunshine. Are you sure? I'm positive. It's going to be a lovely day. The horse, yeah, what are you saying? And you attach the other rope to the other side of the halter. Then let the rope go under the horse's belly like the other rope. And then you arrive to the testicles. 
and then you make a round, you infillate the testicle and tie it up without too strong, otherwise you get ticklish. And then you go to the other side, you made another ring, and feel it, and go into the testicle, tie it up, and then you leave it there, tranquil. Tranquil, and he doesn't even know that he's living live on the earth. He walks about. When he's really there, that he doesn't know that he's alive on this planet, you arrive from behind, you jump on this hole, yeah! He immediately has a reaction with his head, yeah! Block. Then he does it with his inner leg. Yeah, pia, block. Then he does it with his back. Yeah, pia, pia. You see these holes after the third shocking, the way that he goes around. <laughs> A ballerina. He did all, all the. The difficult was still to stay on him. And so the black came. The black guy jumped on the horse. He made him do whatever he wanted to do. First he made it go backward, then forward, then he made it go left and then right. And then he made it do and even make a little bow. The Indians were fascinated. They weren't afraid anymore. They all wanted to go on the horses. Luckily, a week later, we found nearly 60 horses who were nearly drawn into a river. And we managed to save, to rescue them. And these Indians were going on the horses like if they were born on the horses. I saw one day, one Indian was coming with a horse. He had another Indian on his shoulder. Then another Indian came with another horse. They look at each other. They squeeze that. This jump with all of the horse onto the shoulder of the other Indians. Like a totem, a pyramid. They were like acrobatic. Just imagine a few months before, they were totally afraid by these people. Good night. Ciao, Nico. Uh, I like to say hello to people. Uh, but the... And so we walk, I don't know how many we were. And finally we arrived there at the end of the journey. We saw fire on the night. Fire. Who's making fire? Only, only people who are not afraid of anybody. And in fact, we reached the hills, looked down, and there it was. Cachoque. The Spanish town, I told you! Here it is, Cachoque! The Spanish town, look at that. Look at that, that is the photo where they keep all the food. Look at that one, that is the cathedral, the church. Look at the fortress. Look down there, look. Look at the ships at the bay. Look down there. Look up there. Look over there, over the, over the mountain. Look, those big holes. Mines, mines of gold and silver. Look at there, down in the field. Look at the carube. Look all those people, those slaves. Look how many. Look at there. Look all those slaves unloading and loading goods on the ships. Look. Look up there, look. Oh, look by the palace of the governor. Look at there, look how many people hung. 20, 25 people hung. Our Katie, look at there by the governor palace. The Indians went pale, walked back. They didn't say a word. No, no, it's all right. We don't go. Let's go back, let's go back. Let, we need to make a parliament. We need to walk away from here for three days. Let go, let go, we have to make a parliament. When we reach the safe place that nobody could hear us, nobody could see us, we decide we need to count ourselves. We need to know how many we are. First of all, the men. The men, all of you count yourself. 200, 300, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 7,000. Well, the, the women, how many? All the women, let's see, 300, 400, 600, 700, 800, 2, 4, 10,000. And the kids, all the kids, the girls and the kids and the elderly people, how many we are? 200, 400, 700, 10,000. 35,000 were too many. We're far too many. We are double, more than double the entire city of Kachoke. If they see us arrive in such a number, they get such a fright, they kill us all. Let's go. We cannot go. We cannot go. We cannot go. But look, at, look at yourself. Look at the way you dress. Dress. <laughs> they look all naked. And, and above all, you don't know anything about our religion. If the Spanish find out that you don't know anything about our religion, they enslave you right away. 
There should be a priest here, someone who can tell you something about our doctrine and religion. But we haven't any. We don't even have an akura, a bishop. But it's only me, a blasphemous. I cannot. Eh? What? Me teaching you religion? No, I cannot. So don't make any fun. Please, I cannot teach you the religion. Please, I said if I can. All right. All right. All right, I'm going to do it. I pay attention, eh? Because after I will interrogate you all. Now, my dear friend, the first thing you hope to know is that a Christian has a soul. The soul never dies. The body dies, goes down under the earth, rotten, and the soul, if the body has been good on this earth, will fly aptly free onto the sky. Otherwise, will precipitate deep down into hell, burn to eternity. Amen. You like it? <laughs> the Indians didn't really un quite understand the story of the soul for the sake of truth. Never do we. But it's another, <laughs> another story altogether. The other things that the Indians did not understand is when I began to tell them about Adam and Eve. When, when Adam and Eve came onto this earth, Adam and Eve is just like you. Eve, Biota, Nuda, Desnuda, with the... the with the passer all flying to the wind, with the teeth, hair to the wind, everything to the wind. Adam with his willy willy floating into the air. And they were there, no any problem. They were taking fruit. They wasn't even need to dress the salad. No one was need nothing. They were eating raw like he was. And then all of a sudden, uh, the scoundrel snake came out. He had an apple in his mouth. And you know, the snake said, hey, Adam, start teasing Eva. Eva, you like the apples? No, I don't like apples. Thank you very much. Tell Adam. Adam, would you like an apple? Yes, I'll have an apple. If uh, Eve has a half. All right. Let's split it into two. Then half apple, the Eve, half apple. As soon as they ate the apple, an archangel, Michael, Raphael, I don't remember his name, with a sword. Hey, you bastard, you have eaten the forbidden fruit. Get out of the earthly paradise. Then immediately the Indians have shouted, that one for sure is a Spanish Christian. <laughs> and as soon as they ate the apple, they have the shame. As soon as they have to cover themselves, it became a shame. And and the other things that the, the, the Indians didn't really understand this business of the apple because simply there isn't any apple in their land. No apple, no pears, no even small one. They have the mango. A huge fruit like that. So what I did, I took the mango, put it into the snake mouth. The poor snake couldn't even speak. Ah, Adam, eat the mango. Adam, Eve, eat the mango. Poor beast. Uh, the other thing that they didn't understand very much is when I told them about God. God and the sacrifice of Isaac. Isaac, his son. Oh, they didn't like God at all. Oh, they didn't like God at all. Especially when I told this story that Adam, uh, that God, Isaac was there in his vineyard digging the ground, working. Then when God came out from the sky, ah, Abraham, Abraham, oh God, yes. God is me. God, I love you. I do anything you want to do. Good. Good, Abram. Listen, I want you to do me a favor. Go and get your beloved son, Isaac. Bring him up on the mountain. Chop off his head and put it on a fire and roast it a little bit. I like the smell of burning flesh. First fish in the morning. God, my son, Isaac. But this, what could we do with a sheep, with a goat? No, I want your son, but God, you love me. Yes, I do. Well, do it then. Oh, oh, Isaac. Oh, come with me, Isaac. Don't look at me. It's God who holds me through. Don't look at me with those eyes, Isaac. Come, come here. Bend your head down here. Oh, God. What a sacrifice you are asking me to do. Oh God, this sacrifice for you. He's lowering his uh, knife down on Isaac's head when an angel came out from the sky. Stay your hand. And God came out from the clouds. <laughs> Abraham, you tweet. I played a joke on you. <laughs> the angels didn't really like this kind of jokes. They didn't like God at all. 
but they love Jesus. Oh, they love Jesus, especially because Jesus was generous, was healthy, was uh, humble, it was already going around. They love children. Let the children, let the kids come with me. They are the salt of this land. Let the children grass and was generous. If someone was walking with a limb, he will come and say, Hey, you walk straight. Oh, thank you, Jesus. A miracle, a miracle, a miracle. Especially when that day went up on the mountain making the miracle and the fish and the chips, everybody were mad about it. <laughs> Jesus, what a feast! They loved Jesus. Oh, when I told them that Jesus was being traitor by one of, us, of his team, of his band, and they brought him up onto a cross and they nailed it to the cross and it was oozing down with the blood and below there was Madonna and Maria and this, oh, they were crying, there was, oh, they loved the Madonna. They loved the, the, the Madonna, especially, they didn't like the apostles, the apostles. Apostles were like this. No, but they were always so serious, always going around praying all the time and above all, they were always men. Only men that the Indians got suspicious. <laughs> so I put inside the apostles Mary Magdalene. Oh, they love it. Oh, she was always naked, oh, covered only with her hair. And every now and again she walks up to the apostles, hey, Lucas, Marcus, yaka! <laughs> Oh, they love it. They love Madeleine. When I told them that they were going to nail the cross with Madeleine and his mother, Jesus' mother, under the cross, crying, weeping, they started to cry. And if he was a son of theirs, they start weeping each other. Christ is dying. He's dying. Christ is dying. Christ is dying. 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 Stop it now. It's too much. Come on. Don't need to all this weeping, all this whining. Well, it's a, an old story that's happened a long time ago. <laughs> Nobody remembers anymore. And anyway, after all, Christ is going to resurrect. No, it's not true. You are going to tell this just to console us. It's not, hey, you be careful. There has already been someone else who didn't believe, Thomas. He went with his finger right into the wound of Jesus and a lightning came down from the sky. Yeah, shut! Stump and big hilo. <laughs> Be careful. He's alive. No, this girl, Christ is going to resurrect. He's going to return alive. Oh, alive is all. They were songing. They were coming with beer made out of maize. They will drink. There were some people coming with long cane and they have a flower in their hands uh, called borracho. Flower, uh, borrachero in Spanish language means uh, drunk. It comes from this flower. They put, hey, you stay still. <coughs> Me too, please. Oh, I see God. Oh, you crazy. What's the matter with you? What do you do? You chant, you drink, you sing, you make love, you drug yourself in front of God. We cannot. No. Can we sing? No. Can we chant? No. Can we make? No. Can we drink? No. Only the priest does. The other are watching. <laughs> What a hell of a dark religion is this? No, it's not a dark religion. It's a religion of love and joy. And I still remember in my village, on the day where Christ resurrected, there are lovely songs that are sung to bring out this joy of the people. Oh, you must learn it. I'm going to sing it to you and you must learn. But when we go to the Spanish, we'll sing this song. Listen to it. Listen, it's easy. It's easy to learn, you can easily find it. Oh, che bello, che allegria, le ancamo vivo il fiol del ciel. Le ancamo vivo il fiol della Maria. Maria Vergine è un gran contento. Nessun de noi altri che più spavento. Né dei turchi né del gran vento. Né dei turchi né del cristiano. Oh, che bello, che allegria, le ancamo vivo il fiol del ciel, le ancamo vivo il fiol della Maria, Maria Vergine è un gran contento, nessun de noi altri che più spavento, né dei turchi né del gran vento, né dei turchi né del cristiano. Bella, bella, 
they learned it right away. They were singing it a little bit too merrily. Oh, how lovely, oh, how joy. It's still alive, the song of Jesus. It's still alive, the song of Mary. The Virgin Mary is full of joy. Hey, no, no, no. We cannot sing church song moving all that bum. We can't. No. What a pity. So I prepared some crosses. I made them to know the fundamental question of our religion. And then I prepared some crosses. As soon as I gave some of these crosses, they painted with all the color. They attached birds feather all over. <laughs> they lift it up. Oh, how lovely, oh, how jolly. It's still alive, the son of Mary. It's still alive, the son of Jesus. The Virgin Mary is full of joy. No one can be afraid. Neither the Turks, nor the Christians. No the one can be afraid. Now, please, please, we cannot go every. Do you want to go through? Please. Thank you. You came to rescue me. I needed some water. Now, please, we cannot go everybody. We are far too many. Just a thousand. Just a thousand of us. Everybody else needs to be hidden behind the mountains. Nobody can show themselves out. We go down, see how it is going to be. Right? So we started off with our crosses, singing. We arrived there in front of the fortress. The Spanish soldiers were stunned, looking down. Indians who sing, who sang church songs. Unbelievable. And the governor came out. Who oh, teaches? Who has been teaching our religion to these Indians? I did, sir. While I was speaking to the governor, some of the Indians came with baskets full of gold, gems, stones, and they put it down in front of them. I did, sir. I am Joan Padan. They call me son of the rising sun, son of the moon. I taught them this religion. Did I do well, sir? Yes. Governor looking down at the back, you did very well, Joan Padana. Open the door! Now listen to me, soldiers, guards, soldiers of Spain. These Indians will come here into our land to work free in our property. There will be five to subject of the Queen and the King of Spain. They will become our hero. They will be working here free. Obliged but free. It is written like this in the Queen's law obliged but free but the indians did not really understand but enough that during the night as this indian came in they flee out of the of the town and the only one who was always left tired as i was it was me and i felt early in the morning a uh, hand getting me from my throat in this way taking me out here and they brought me where the governor was sat on the armchair hey you joan padam you came here to touch our wrist. What is this trick that you are for? I warn you, Joan Padan, if these Indians are now right back here by the sound of the working bell, as the sun will go down, you, Joan Padan, you will go right up on a pendant of the highest pole of the fortress. Ang! And that was it. They took me back into the, my barrack, tied up, and I could just think out. Down fool I was. Here I am again, threatened with my death. They're gonna hang me, and that's it. When the sun was down, they came to get me out. They put me, they brought me up on a chair, on a stool. They tied a rope around my neck. They put it around my neck, and they began to pull. They, oh, they strangled me. They're gonna strangle me. They're gonna kill me. Hey! Yeah! 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 Already in hell, it's all red. I'm already in hell, it's all red. It's... No, no, it wasn't hell. It was Indians. There were Indians, hundreds of them with torches in their hands everywhere. Rosso, come forward. Hey, you, Captain, watch out. If you're not gonna free this brother of ours, Joan Padan, we're gonna burn everything. We're gonna burn the food. When you keep the food, we're gonna burn the church. We're gonna burn the palace, and we're gonna burn your ship as well. I'd like to see. Are you going back to Spain with the charcoal ship? 
The captain, ah, fire with the cannon, stop it. The governor, come forward, stop, stop. Stop, I want the fire. Oh, I want to have a speech. I want to have a word. Now, all right, Rosso. Red hair, you're gonna, you're gonna burn everything out. 15 years of tra travail. 15 years of travail of, of hard work in there is in this city. 300,000 pieces of Mara, golden Maravedi that is here right in this moment. You're going to burn out everything, all right. But how many of you are going to die? How many of you will be shut down with the cannon, spike, charged with the horses? Thousand, thousand, thousand of you are going to die. And you're going to risk your life to save the life of this imposter, traitor, son of the moon, son of the rising sun is going to allow to be called by the Indians this impostor, bastard, the, the Indians, the chief of the Indians, raises his hand, por favor, señor gobernador, puede hablar con usted. Bueno, señor gobernador, usted dice que este hombre es un malo hombre. Dice que este hombre es un impostor, traitor. How many days is that you know this man? No less than a moonlight. Then I'm falling of the moon. No, we know him more than five years. He never stolen us even a rotten food. A, a, a drop of, uh, nevertheless, we've been giving gold and silver to carry. He said, no, thank you very much. Keep it yourself. I don't want to be a porter. You weren't invited here. You came here dressed up like a mad guy with a iron hat, with a monster that you call horse, dressed up like all full with iron. You being given death to people who ask, only ask to live. These, be, these guys being given life to those who were dying. You said that this is an imposter, a traitor? He never did any harm to us. Nevertheless, he's been saving us all the way through up to here. He's been always giving us a possibility to carry on our lives. You, you have slaved even our language. You have enslaved everything from us. Even our religion, you have enslaved to us. You enslave all our population, take away people, nobody ever come back. You see that this guy is a traitor and is a blasphemous. This guy taught us a religion full of joy, full of richness. You always tell us of a religion full of deference. Dark religion. Every time you say to us, hey, you be careful, you are alive. But remember that after you're going to die. Hey, you, be careful. Now you be in joy. Enjoy, have a good fun. But remember that after you are going to die. And we touch our balls or woods, if you like. Oh, fire! Spare the fire! They're going to shoot the cannon, but the cannon don't shoot. What's happening? Senor Governor, we saw some Indians who went to have a pee into the cannon. They went all the power that out of the horses. Out of the horses. They pull out the horses for the cavalry, but the horses are roping down. They're jumping out. They're fighting from their ass. What does happen? We saw some Indians with long cane and a white flower into the house. The horses lost it. Oh! From the far end of the town, a group of horses arrived. Hey, they arrived! No, no. Indians. Indians on a horseback. There is no religion anymore. <laughs> they easily captured the whole fortress. No need to kill anybody, folks. Keep calm. Keep calm. Let go. Let them go back into their ship. Pull down all the cannon. Everything. Discharge everything. Let them go. Let go. Let them leave this place. Don't worry. And on the toll of the deck of the ship, the captain, oh, great mistake you've done, Joan Padan. Let us ask God. And now we will arrive here at the first island, Hispaniola, and we loaded up another ship with the horses and, and cannon. We'll come back here and we're going to shoot and kill you all, even the dogs and the fleas on your dogs, too. Oh, yes, says Joan Padan. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, there is a. 
a little saying in our country that says, uh, before to prepare oneself to leave from one place in order to arrive into the second place where you were thinking to arrive once you left the first place, arriving there to prepare yourself to get back into the first place where you must arrive there in the first place before even to think to prepare. The captain did really not understand this. Hey, let him go! Oh, move! Hey, yeah! Boom. The ship start off, and Joan Padan looks at the moon. Mommy, Mama, please, come on, give us a little shop. <laughs> and the lighting of the sky start moving. I could see lighting changing color, but the ship was too far away. And we stayed there all day. And then at night time, we went back to sleep. And in the morning, we saw everything, uh, pieces of um, the elm and the ship wrecked and pigs. Oh, look, oh, the priest, Eminenza, <laughs> ben arrivato. Oh, look at the captain, oh, governor, you too. Oh, they all came back. And from that day, nobody ever came again. 11 years, we destroyed the old town of Cachoque, a huge forest of trees came back again. And then 11 days, 11 years after, one day we were at the shore and we saw the sea was full of flags. Ships and flag, flags, Castilla y Leon, the great commander of Spain arrived there, we flee the area, we return into the forest, this Castilla, this Captain Pamphilo Narvaez, great commander, he came down with a map and says, oh, there is a town here, there was a Cachoque town, where is it? There is no, I don't care, let's go, go with the army inside the huge forest when a fire broke out. Then let's go this way, then another fire, let's go this way, another fire, another fire, another. they all burned to death. And then two years later came his son, Nunez Vasquez Pamphilo Narvaez. He arrived down, smarter than his father, I don't like this. I'm going to the other side. He goes to the other side, walks with all the army inside the huge cannon. Hello, ciao, ciao, please. Ciao, ciao. Huge canyon. He arrived there in front of a huge cascade of water. Get back. We can't go any further. There is water coming down. Back. It is difficult to go back with heavy horses, mounted horses, with iron on top. Quickly. It's flooding everywhere. Quick. Oh, it's difficult to run away. Go, 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 They all drawn to death. What a bad luck. Then came our Fra Luis Cancel Bavarastro. He went down with the whole of his army. He entered into the forest, disappeared. Then came Luis Miguel. He went down with a huge army, entered and disappeared. Then came Angelo Guglielmo Bagaros. And right dentro, le disparure. And then arrived the biggest one of all, Hernando de Soto, the most admiral chief of the whole army of Spain, entered into the fort. He had 900 soldiers and 300 orders and 60 cannon. Never an army came down there ever before. He entered, and the chronicle always with him says, these Indians are like demons. They compare in the night, we are sat, and we are sparrows all over the places. We are sat eating another day, a fire broke out. We walk on a little river and a flood come down, hell. And after three months, they arrived at the shore, 30 of them, 28 were horses. <laughs> and then from that moment, King of Spain, Enrico V of Spain said, that's enough. I declare this terra, Tierra Florida, malarbete inespugnable. Land of Florida, maledetta. Damned and inespugnable. Unprendable. It's written like this in the document of the King of Spain. It means that even a Spanish Christian comes there and he comes back alive without my order, I'm going to kill him with my own hands. And from day day on, no Spanish ever came. Some French came, came down, saw some white bones, and said, oh, excuse-moi, pardon. <laughs> and now, 35, 40 years have passed from that moment I came over here. And I'm, I'm so, I'm old now, but I'm healthy. 
I'm healthy and good and, and they all love me. I got so many they, I got so many children, I don't even know how many I have. Every time and now and again I say, Hey, I am your father. Yes, I'm not pleased to meet you. Hey, you are my son. Yes, sir. Like, I got so many wives, I don't even know how many I have. They all call me, Oh, holy father, holy father, they call me. <laughs> Only every now and again I don't know where it's coming from. This wind, the uh, right, well, same wind that comes from my little valley, comes, uh, gets into my nose and uh, such uh, my guts, oh, such a break of nostrils, it comes out and I have to run away from it. I even sense the smell when they smoke the, the, the food in my own country. Perfino, even the sale, song of the churches give me nostalgia, nostalgy and even the curses of the people brings me back now. At this moment, I have to run away from it. And I go down at the shore and I lie there and they prepare an hammock, a huge hammock for me. And I lie down on this hammock and there is these lovely, quiet, gentle, gentle ladies and girls who pushes me, pushes me, pushes me, balances me and sings me the same old song that I told them. Oh, que bello, que alegria, vean como vivo el fiol del cielo. E anche mo vivo il fiol della Maria, Maria Vergine è un gran contento, ne si danno altri che più spavento, ne dei turchi ne del gran vento, ne dei turchi ne del gran vento, ne dei turchi ne del cristiano. Oh, how lovely, oh, how jolly, is the life the son of Mary, is the life the son of Mary, the Virgin Mary is full of joy, no one else is afraid no more, neither the Turks nor the Christians, oh, how lovely, oh, how jolly, is the life the son of Mary. Grazie di essere rimasto. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Where are you from, Australia? Melbourne. Well, you know, I've been in your town. I've been 10 days at the International Festival in Melbourne with this play. You want to know a lovely story about it? There was a 16, 17 years old boy there. I was fascinated by this story. And some 15 years later, himself he became an actor and he put this play translated by me in stage in australia on stage and he's still going around with that play yes and he put also a history of the aborigin inside the play yes of course because you have quite all the same story eh, folks <laughs> okay thank you very much everybody thank you voglio dire giuseppe vieni qua per favore io voglio scusami giuseppe voglio ringraziare I'd like to say thanks to Maestro Giuseppe Schembri Bonacci because he has been such a guy. He never gave up. Guess how many years he's been trying to bring this kind of show in this city? More than 35 years. I met him in Milan in 1983 at Dario Four House. And he wanted very much to bring Dario Four down here. It's a pity. He, didn't succeed, I'm so sorry, he, but it's funny, you know, and it has, Dario has to die for, to allow me to come here with this show, but somehow, Dario, I hope he's going to enjoy us tonight, and it's, I'm sure he's been watching over us. Thank you, Dario, bravo! Okay. Thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you.